Hello, I'm Susan Moore with Spirit of Women and Banner Health, and we're learning things to take better care of ourselves, and more important than that, take better care of our families and the people we love. And I'm delighted to get to visit with a cardiologist, Dr. Gary Rath. Dr. Rath, welcome. Well, thank you, Susan. When I told my husband I was going to be talking to you today, he said back in the 60s when he was in medical school, one of the biggest thing was realizing the control of high blood pressure. Has anything happened since the 60s on that subject? Quite a bit has happened okay. since the 60s, Susan. We have probably eight or ten new major classes of medications since that time when leeches and bleeding oh, were no. the treatments of choice. So, My goodness. <laughs> Would you please bring us up to date on what are some of the factors of heart disease, the risk factors that maybe we could fix before we have to see you? Well, there are a number of things that you can do to decrease your chances of seeing me okay. in this setting. Uh -huh. um, probably the most important is cigarette smoking. Ah. It is the most weighty risk factor that mm. can be altered. You can't do much about your family history by the time you uh, discover that you have coronary disease. It's too little late to change parents. But uh, <laughs> the other risk factors include exercise, weight loss, and um, moderate alcohol intake and uh, tobacco avoidance. All right. Even, even the e-cigarettes, the smokeless cigarettes? Well, that is an interesting question because there is not the same association with coronary disease with either smokeless tobacco or with the e-cigarettes. Uh -huh. um, there's a certain grossness factor of the smokeless tobacco that the rivulets <laughs> of brown drool and the, uh, yeah. the risk of um, oropharyngeal cancer, which is, which is huge, but um, there's not the same coronary risk if the tobacco is not smoked. Okay. Well, moving along, we talked a little bit about some of the treatments for high blood pressure. Is it just a pill you pop and feel like a mill? There are a number of different um, new medications that have come out in the last 30 years for treatment of high blood pressure um, that have less side effects than what was available 50 years ago. Um, so ultimately, we can find a combination of medications in almost anyone that can be tolerated that will control blood pressures. Um, there was an interesting um, trial looking at denervating the kidneys with a catheter um, to decrease the nerve supply to the kidneys that people held hope out as a surgical procedure, although relatively non-invasive, that might treat high blood pressure and decrease need for medications. Um, those studies have not panned out. It's not a long-term fix, so we're still left with primarily medications, and again, weight loss and uh, lifestyle exercise will, will decrease blood pressure risk. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I know you're busy saving lives, and that's the honest truth, but is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you'd like to I just think throw in? One of the big things that, that has changed here um, in terms of the, the world of invasive cardiology is using the radial artery to access the coronaries. Um, the radial artery is over the wrist on the side of the thumb, and it is large enough that we can put a catheter in through there and avoid the need for accessing the femoral artery. The advantage of the radial is primarily, or patient comfort is huge. Um, with one cc of, of Novocaine, you can numb up the skin so that people don't have the pain that you'd have if you were trying to, to access the femoral artery. The other thing about the radial artery is it sits right over the bones and the wrists, so you cannot have life-threatening bleeding that you're not aware of. Um, so you can see the puncture site after the, the sheath is out, and um, it, you can't have life-threatening bleeding as opposed to a femoral artery stick where the artery runs into the pelvis and mm -hmm. if there's leaking from the vessel it can um, result in life-threatening bleeding. So uh, patient comfort is, is the big thing but there are decreased vascular complications when you use the radial approach. You can take the sheath out as soon as you're done with a procedure whether you've done just a diagnostic catheterization just taking pictures 
or if you've um, gone on and put stints in and balloons and that sort of thing. So basically, most of the things that we used to do through the groin can be done through the radial artery. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? It is. It's been a nice change. It means we can get people out sooner. There's less discomfort, less vascular risk. So it, uh, um, the staff likes it too because no longer are you trying to pull the tube out and um, prevent bleeding after the, the tube is out. So um, the staff has a lot less musculoskeletal issues from holding pressure from, from femoral puncture sides. So it's, it's been a, a good thing for everybody. Well, I hear you're coming my way to Fort Collins. We are, Susan. We're building a new facility in Fort Collins I on know. Harmony Road. Perhaps you've seen all the construction activity. Yeah. Yes, I, we've been waiting for you to come up because you're right on Harmony there, we just are. a little bit west of the interstate. We, we are, and there will, cardiology will be represented there as a part of the service line that's covered at that institution. So we have a presence here in Greeley and in Loveland at McKee, and we will in Fort Collins. And that's coming right up. It's coming up in the next month, Susan. Yeah, it is. Dr. Rath, thank you so much. You've been a delight to talk with. You really have. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm Susan Moore for Spirit of Women and Banner Health.